To understand unemployment properly, we need to know how to define and measure it. We also need to understand the different types of unemployment and their possible causes. Let's imagine a country with a total adult population of 10 people. Five people are employed, and there is one person who is not employed and is looking for a job. The other four people are also not employed, but they are not actively looking for paid work. These people may be students, retired, or they may be taking care of family. Economists call everybody who is employed or looking for employment the labor force. People who are not in employment and are not looking for a job are considered to be not part of the labor force, and they are not counted as unemployed. The unemployment rate equals the number of people unemployed as a share of the total labor force. In this example, the size of the labor force is 6, and the unemployment rate is 1 over 6, or nearly 17%. Another important measure is the labor force participation rate. This is the labor force as a share of the total adult population. Here, the labor force participation rate is 6 divided by 10, or 60%. Unemployment never drops to zero. First, there are always some people between jobs and they need some time to find work that suits them. This is called frictional unemployment and consists mostly of people who are unemployed only for a short time. Then there is unemployment that results from the structure of an economy. When the skills offered in the labor market do not match the demands of employers, this may be a result of technological change, inadequate training, or wage demands that are higher than what employers are willing to pay. Adding up frictional and structural unemployment gives us the natural rate of unemployment in an economy. The natural rate of unemployment changes slowly, but the actual rate of unemployment fluctuates constantly as a result of economic growth being slow or fast. This deviation from the natural rate is called cyclical unemployment. Measuring unemployment is useful, but it is not an exact science. For example, there may be some people who are unemployed who are not actively looking for a job or who are working without declaring it to the government. On the other hand, some people may want to work, but they have given up on finding a job and are then considered to be outside the labor force. These people are not counted as unemployed. Also, some people may be underemployed. This is when they work fewer hours than they would like or when their skills are not fully utilized. With unemployment still being a problem in many countries, you can imagine that the causes of unemployment are complex and the subject of much debate. That concludes the intro to unemployment. Check our other videos for more insights. Brought to you by Sim Institute.